In this short video, we'll be discussing restrictive versus non-restrictive relative clauses. When we discuss restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses, we're not discussing new types of relative clauses, but we're discussing the different meanings in relative clauses. Um, knowing the difference between these two um, not restrictive and non-restrictive relative clauses will help you to understand when to include commas and when to exclude commas in your sentence with a relative clause. So let's take a look at restrictive relative clauses first. So restrictive relative clauses pro provide information in the relative clause that's needed to identify which specific noun you're describing. We can use the relative pronouns who, which, whom, that, and whose. So we can use all of them. And for restrictive relative clauses, we do not use commas. So let's take a look at several examples. We have the sentences, there are 100 students in the classroom. The student who is majoring in psychology is from Saudi Arabia. We could also use that in this relative clause. Of course, this relative clause is describing this subject, the student. But notice we do not use commas around this relative clause. And the reason why is that we need this information, who is majoring in psychology, to determine which student we're talking about. So in other words, if we take out this relative clause, the sentence is not going to make sense. So we imagine there are 100 students in the classroom, and we're, we're talking about one particular student. If we say the student is from Saudi Arabia, we'll have no idea who we're talking about in a class of 100 students. But if we add this restricted relative clause, who is majoring in psychology, we can pick out the one student, the one that's majoring in psychology, and this student is the student from Saudi Arabia. So we need this information to pick out which student we're talking about. Here's another example. The student whom you mentioned yesterday is an excellent artist. We could also say the student that you mentioned yesterday is an excellent artist. So again, we need this relative clause to identify which student we're talking about. If we take out the relative clause, we end up with the sentence, the student is an excellent artist. We have no idea which student is being talked about. So we need this information to determine which specific student we're talking about. Another example. The student whose art you enjoy is transferring to the Art Center College of Design. So again, um, we can use the relative pronoun whose. Whose art you enjoy is the relative clause that specifies which student we're talking about. If we take out this relative clause, we're left with the sentence, the student is transferring to the Art Center College of Design. The grammar is correct, but now we don't know which student we're talking about. So we need this adjective clause and the information in this adjective clause to identify which student. The other type of uh, relative, relative clause we're talking about is the non-restrictive relative clause. And non-restrictive relative clauses provide information in the relative clause that's just extra information. It's not needed to identify the noun you're describing. And with the non-restricted relative clauses, we can use the relative pronouns who, which, whom, and whose. If you notice in this list, we don't have that. And we can't use that in a non-restrictive relative clause. Also, we use commas to separate non-restrictive relative clauses from the rest of the 
sentence. So let's look at a couple of examples. We have the first sentence, Santa Monica College, which is a community college in Southern California, attracts many international students. So notice that we have this relative clause, which is a community college in Southern California. It's describing Santa Monica College. But we have commas around this adjective clause. And again, the reason why we have commas around this adjective clause is that we don't really need this information in the relative clause. We can very easily take out this information and we're left with the sentence Santa Monica College attracts many international students. We don't need this information to identify which Santa Monica College. There's only one Santa Monica College, so it's extra information. Let's take a look at the next one. Harvard College, which is located on the east coast of the United States, is often ranked as the number one university in the world. We have a relative clause, which is located on the east coast of the United States. And this is a non-restricted relative clause. We have commas around it. And again, this is because we can take out the relative clause. And we have a sentence that still makes sense. We get Harvard College is often ranked as the number one university in the world. We don't need this extra information to identify which Harvard College. There's only one Harvard College in the world. And here's one last example. Barack Obama, whom you met yesterday, is the pres President of the United States. So again, we have a object relative clause here, but we put commas around it because it's not really important information. There's only one Barack Obama, so the sentence would make perfect sense even if it just said Barack Obama is the President of the United States. The information in the relative clause is not important. And the last one, Oscar Peterson, whose music I love, passed away in 2007. So we have a possessive relative clause, whose music I love. It's set off by commas because it's non-restrictive. We don't need the information in this relative clause for the sentence to make sense. We can very easily say Oscar Peterson passed away in 2007. There's only one Oscar Peterson that most people know is a famous musician. So we don't need to have this extra information whose music I love.